Sending a good email is easy. Sending a great email, eh, not so much. In this video, we're going to talk about the ingredients that make up a great email pitch. And by ingredients, we mean subject lines, opening hooks, value propositions, and call to actions for getting your recipients to say yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's break it down. First up, the subject line. This little line can determine whether your email is open or lost in the abyss. Only about 22% of emails ever get open. Shocking, I know. And often, the subject line is the culprit when emails are left unsolved. We're aiming for a sweet spot between two to seven words for our subject lines. This range is the Goldilocks zone. Not too long, not too short, just right for piquing interest without disclosing the whole story. Make sure to check for spam words. With Respana, you can easily check your emails for spam words by hovering your mouse over the reply chance calculator. Adding a personal touch can increase your open rates by 30.5%. With Respana, you add it automatically using variables like first name, company, and whatever other variables you want to use. But that's far from all of it. Respana also brings AI-powered variables to the table. One of these variables is the subject line, which will generate unique subject lines for every opportunity in your campaign. Let's have a glance at some strong subject line examples. Here's example one. Want to collaborate with us at company variable? This gives just enough intrigue and direct appeal for a partnership. Example two just simply states, issue with a link in your topic blog post. This signals there's a helpful fix it awaiting for them inside. So now with your subject line sorted, let's craft an opening line. Just like a firm handshake, your opening line sets the tone for the conversation that follows. You son of a It's right after your salutation. So after your, hey, John. Make sure that you're using their name. It's the first step in making that personal connection. No one wants to feel like they're just another name on a mailing list. Your opening line should be a mix of introduction and insight. If you've done your homework, show it off here. Mention a recent success of theirs, or if you know a pain point that they have, lay it out for them. It's vital because according to Backlinko, emails with a personal touch get 32% more replies. Here, Respondent can help you out with another AI variable, the icebreaker. It will scan your prospect's article and pull a key pain point automatically so that all you have to do is review it later. Here are a few do's for crafting your opener. Say who you are, clearly and swiftly. Jump straight into why you're in their inbox. Use personalization to show them that this isn't just a copy and paste job. But remember, there's a fine line between personal and intrusive. While their company LinkedIn posts are fair game, commenting on their vocation pics, eh, not so much. Now, let's take a look at some examples to bring this all to life. Here's example one. I'm writing a few guest posts for sites like example of a recent guest post you've done and looking for resources to include them. Do you have a relevant blog post in marketing? I was thinking one of your posts. Here's number two. I'm reaching out to you because I noticed that you linked to competitor from your post. We actually just released our own article on email copywriting. I think it would also be a good fit for your post and help expand on the topic a little bit. Next, we're diving into the body of your email, the meat and the potatoes of your message. Consider this your digital elevator pitch. You've got a short ride to make a lasting impression, so make each word count. The ideal length for an outreach email is going to be around 75 to 125 words. Long enough just to convey your point, but certainly no novel. And if you're a fan of bullet points, that's bad news bears. They can help make your message feel mass sent. We recommend writing your emails as if they were meant for a single person. So in plain text. So what should you include in the body? Focus on what's in it for them. In other words, your value add or the incentive you're providing. For link building pitches, this would be an indirect ABC link back. Our favorite incentive is a link slot in one of our upcoming guest posts. When drafting, follow these best practices. Be concise and keep your text flowing naturally. We recommend not using formatting like bold or italics. It might make the emails look unnatural and mass sent. Check for spam words or anything that feels overly salesy. You should follow the default Gmail formatting to make your email much easier on the eyes. Now onto the no-nos. Go easy on the exclamation points and make sure to prove free to avoid any unfortunate typos for, or grammar snafus. Tools like Grammarly are like that one friend who's got your back before a big presentation. The body of your email should include two other elements, your value proposition and a call to action. The value proposition is arguably the most important part of a cold email and can make or break your campaign. In fact, we recommend centering your entire first email around the incentive. For link building, a solid value proposition would just be an indirect link back, such as a slot in one of your upcoming guest posts. Guest posting should always be part of your link building strategy, not just a way to get backlinks from your site from author bio section, but as a way to offer your link building partners links from your guest articles. 
This way, you'll be able to stay away from direct reciprocal exchanges while building up your own authority within your niche. Other value propositions that could work for affiliate recruitment strategies like a product review could include free examples of your products, invitations to your affiliate program, and even sponsorships. Things like newsletter mentions and social shares don't quite cut it anymore, uh, but for link building, once again, the most common value proposition is an indirect link back. Next up, the ask or the call to action. Your CTA should be simple, easy to find, easy to act on. Whether you're looking for a reply, a meeting, social connection, or a form completion, your goal is to make it as seamless as possible. It should stand out enough that they can't miss it, but blend in enough that it doesn't scream, this is a marketing email. I don't know, it's a marketing scheme. <laughs> Best practices to bear in mind include, use an active verb to propel them into action. Words like choose, send, connect, or read make it clear what you expect them to do. We also recommend ending your emails with a low barrier question, such as, can I send you more info? That doesn't require a ton of commitment, but opens doors for a conversation to continue. Here are some things to avoid. Too many links can be a distraction and a deterrent. Stick to a maximum of three and only if they're absolutely necessary. Don't bury your CTA in a sea of text. The natural place to include it is at the end of your pitch. And do not highlight it with different color or formatting. So let's run through examples just for clarity. Here's example one. Let me know if you'd like to be included. Here's example two. All I'm asking for in return is a backlink as well. Would that work for you? And now for example three. Happy to share the drafts if you'd like to take a look at the content. Last but not least, let's talk about your sign off. No need to reinvent the wheel here. A simple looking forward to hearing from you or cheers paired with a visually appealing email signature works just fine. Me personally, I prefer all the best. When sending cold outreach, it's vital to include an unsubscribe link to give your recipients a way to opt out of any further communications. Not only is this a legal requirement, but can also help you from getting flagged as spam. Stellar email or not, sometimes silence is all you get in your inbox. Don't worry, this is what follow-ups are made for. A majority of business emails are read within the first 24 hours, but that doesn't always translate into immediate replies. Timing is key. Waiting for about three to five working days before hitting send on your first follow-up is important. Don't smother your prospects with zealous follow-up emails. We suggest sending one follow-up and mentioning in that follow-up that it is a one-time email to remain respectful of their inbox. It decreases the chance that they'd market as spam and also so that you don't sound annoying. Here's an example. Hi name, I wanted to send over a one-time follow-up email to see if you received my last email. To remain respectful of your inbox, I won't follow up again in case I don't hear from you. Last but not least, let's take a look at an email template that has secured us hundreds of links. We use this one for link building with the competitor backlinks and even the link insertion strategies. It works great because pretty much all of it is one big value prop. Surely everyone would love to get free backlinks, right? The ask only comes at the end, but the central point is around the incentive. The key with this one is to only send it to the right person in charge of SEO and content, such as the SEO or content managers, so that they recognize that this is a link pitch and are receptive to the ask. As we part ways, just for now, remember the perfect pitch is just a combination of research, relevance, and respect.